Hello there everyone, welcome to the milk bar. <sighs> so this milk bar, I've got nothing special planned, no, nothing, with, we haven't reached a milestone, I've got nothing special to announce, I do not have anything to test or do extra, I really haven't done that in a long time. But it gets hard to come up with things like that. Uh, it will happen in the future, it's, it's not a must. But what I do have today is a lot of questions. Uh, three questions, which is quite a lot for my channel. So yeah, three questions. Two of them are a bit longer, one is a bit shorter. Uh, so I'll just start with the short one just to get it out of the way. So, hua! Questions! So the first question is not really a question to me, it's more, it's very easy to find out by yourself, just like Google it. Uh, but sure, I can answer it. It's a Zelda question for Majora's Mask. So, was there any way to obtain the Chateau Romani other than the final night in Majora's Mask? And yes, and I would not consider that, I, I when I saw this comment I was like, oh yeah, you can get it from, like, in the really close to the end from Madame Aroma, who is at the milk bar <laughs> in which this show is named after, uh, in Majora's Mask. And if you give her the letter uh, from her son, Cafe, she will give you a bottle with Chateau Romani, 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 whatever. And what this is, it's, I think it fills up your health like normal milk does in the like Zelda game. Uh, <laughs> don't know exactly how many. I know it's an Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I'm not sure if there are milk in any other Zeldas. <sighs> I don't remember. Eh, whatever. But this milk also completely fills up your magic bar and makes it unable. To, you, makes you unable to run out of magic. I'm. I. It was long ago. I used it. So I don't remember. It's ex exact effect, like, for how long does that magic stay intact like that? Anyway, there is another way to get it, and it's what I would consider the normal way, because if you go to the milk bar, normally the uh, barkeeper, which is Talon, but here he's known as Mr. Barton, it's the same mo character model, uh, he doesn't have any. He's out of it, and the way to and the road to the ranch is blocked. Therefore, he can't get any. But it it opens up on the third day, so that's probably why they have it on the third night. But if you do the Romani Ranch side quest stuff and uh, do the get to the part where you're escorting the carriage to town, if you complete that, you'll gain, you'll get the Romani's mask, so you can enter the milk bar at night, and also, if you've done that, you, then you can just buy it. You can buy the Chateau Romani milk from Mr. Barton it, from the second night and onward. I don't think it, you can get it before that, so it has to, its earliest is second night. So yeah, that's that question, yeah! And on to the second question, it's a bit longer, it's from one of you guys, obviously. Um, but okay, you speak very good English, and the only hint of an accent I ever detect is once in a while your J will sound like a Y, like jump will sound like yump. And I was wondering, do they teach it in school, or is it just something many people just learn to speak in Sweden? Uh, and how many languages do I know, uh, or somewhat know? Well, yeah, one big difference, uh, and I'm guessing this is the case for most of the Nordic countries, but I can only speak for Sweden because that's what I know, compared to like Italy and Germany and France and other European countries, is that we don't really dub that much. The only things we dub are children, like cartoons, we dub to Swedish. Otherwise, we just put subtitles and everything and usually most of the things are in English, so since a very young age we kind of hear it in English all the time while seeing the Swedish translation, so we kind of learn by default, and I don't know what it is right now, but when I was young, um, 
was young, I'm still quite young, but when I was a kid, uh, we start to learn English in school at, in fourth grade, uh, Swedish, it might not be that way anymore, uh, but the Swedish school system, fourth grade, so when we're 10 and onwards. And also it's in video games, so those of us who play video games, we get, uh, we get to hear or see and read a lot of English, and then you kind of have to learn at least a few words. I remember, I, I might have mentioned that when I let's play Pokemon Silver, is that I learned the word battle from playing that game, what that meant, because whenever people would call you, like when you gave out your phone number or got phone numbers from people, when they sometimes they would just call you and just talk random crap, like that doesn't matter. But I noticed a pattern whenever the word battle would appear, uh, when they called you, that meant they wanted a rematch. And so I, I, I like tried that. I went back when they didn't say that, and there was no rematch. And when they said it, there was one. So I, I learned that word that way, for for example. And just slowly over time, it's yeah, it becomes like that. And I guess why I don't have that much of an accent, it's because of that. You hear a lot of English, you read a lot of English, if we really think about it, Swedish and English are not that very different. Well, they are very different, but we have a lot of words that are very similar to one another. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but maybe I'll add it in later. I don't know. But I know, like, if you look at the older Swedish people, you take a look at the more of an accent they usually have because of internet being a thing and things like that. We didn't consume as much English English content back in the day as we do now, so I guess newer generations will be better at it and sound better. And about the little example there with, yeah, the reason I say jump, I don't say jump and I say jump, you, you see there's barely a difference for me, is because in Swedish we don't, we all almost always use a soft J we don't have that j, j sound. We J for us is j, so it's very j, j, very soft. And Y is, I know in English Y can be used as a consonant almost. It's like an in-between letter, but in Swedish it's exclusively a vowel. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. So we, I use a softer J. Or jump, jump. I've also heard uh, like the word uh, sheep as an example, you know, bah, the animal. And uh, if something is on sale that it's cheap, like it's much faster for me as a Swedish per person just to say sheep instead of cheap. Yes, I can, I, hear, I hear the difference, but it's so small for me so that when I'm just let's play and talking normal, or if I'm talking with someone, it just that's how it is. It's like not that it matters. Um, also, I you thank you very much for saying that I'm good at English, uh, but I also must say if I'm talking directly to someone whose native la whose native language is English, I automatically get worse at it because. Like, it feels like you get more pressure on yourself. Right now I'm sitting here alone in my room with my camera pointed at my face. It's it's not really... Well, it used to be. When I started doing YouTube, it was more of pressure. Now, now it's nothing weird to me at all with doing this. <laughs> it's <laughs> quite normal for me. And for the second part there, how many other languages do I know or somewhat know? Well... English and Swedish, obviously. Uh, other than that, I took French in school, but I was not very good at it. Like, I've always been good with the uh, Swedish and English. So when we started reading that in school, I already knew some because of, as I discussed, TV and uh, video games mostly. But with French, I had no experience with that whatsoever. And it was so... And, oh, it's a stupid... I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're French or you like French. But it's a stupid language. Like the the rules for like verbs changing depending on if it's a he or a she that does the thing. Or like 
Yeah, it's... Ooh, that was so confusing to me. I barely remember any French. I, like, I recognize a few words. I, I've learned, like, a few simple words. That's what I remember. I, I took it for four years, so... <laughs> Other than that, I would say, like... I understand a bit of Norwegian, because it's very similar to Swedish. Like, a Swedish Persian... Per Persian? person can talk to a Norwegian person by speaking Swedish and they talk back in Norwegian and you can understand each other. It's th th That's how similar the languages are. Like your mind can fill in the words you don't really get with context. Context is very important. So yeah, that's my answer for that question. Thank you very much for that. It's fun to talk about. And last but not least, I have a question that wasn't that long, but I kind of decided myself to make it longer. So the question is, uh, what game do you have the most nostalgia towards, and can you describe nostalgia? Uh, I'm guessing describe the type of nostalgia towards that game, and I decided to change that little that question a little bit. And instead give you my top five no most nostalgic games for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna do them in order. Number five for me is actually World of Warcraft. And not as it is right now, but because I've been playing World of Warcraft since 2006. I started in February 2006. Uh, only break I ever took was because my computer my computer, I didn't have my own, it was the family computer that I was playing on. It kind of broke down uh, near the... in the summer of 2008, so it was uh, during the Burning Crusade, and all up until uh, Wrath of the Lich King I didn't play from that summer, so it was like, like five months or something like that that I didn't play. Other than that, I've been playing fairly consistently since then, and because I've been playing it for such a long time, I made so many memories that's tied to different parts of the game. It was especially cool when Classic came out last year, and I just... I didn't play that much, uh, but I did a little bit, level to like level 24 or something. And just seeing these old things that now is gone from the... Uh, from the... Uh, current version, but also things in the current version. I have so many memories tied to that game, so that's why it's very nostalgic to me. It's like feelings and things I was doing when doing certain things in the game. It's it's too big to even describe. <sighs> also, before I move on, I'm gonna let you know now that even though The Legend of Zelda series is my favorite video game series, it's not very nostalgic to me. Uh, like, the most nostalgic one of them, I guess, honorable main mention to Ocarina of Time, since it was the first one I played. The thing with Legend of Zelda games is that I've played them a lot of times, and I replay them continuously every now and then. So, the nostalgia kinda disappears because I play them a lot, if that makes any sense. <laughs> anyway, number four. At number four, we find a Another PC game, actually, even though I'm mostly a console gamer. Uh, and it's Disney's Tarzan. <laughs> uh, so it's made after the movie. Uh, it's a PC game. Graphics aren't that impressive uh, for today's standards. Back then it was, like, kinda cutting edge, I suppose. Uh, and we, we got this from... Me and my brother got this from my parents, and we played it so much. I would love to let's play it someday, but I can't. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like either flagged or taken down or something like that because they use so much of the music from the movie, like Disney music. Not a good idea. And I know you can probably turn off the music and only have the sound effects, but... Ah, nah, that kind of ruins like part of the experience, so... I wouldn't want to do that. It's, uh, weirdly enough, not the oldest game on my list um, here, um, but it's... It, it is very nostalgic to me, that game. It's, uh, it's hard to describe why, it's just... An old PC game that I played a lot as a kid. Uh, 
I think I only beat it once, maybe twice, because that last level was really difficult when you fight Clayton. But yeah, I do have the actual soundtrack to listen to. It's available on YouTube, so you can just go and listen to it. It's mostly music from the movie, but a few, like, original pieces as well. Number three is the first ever video game, like, real video game I ever had, and that's Super Mario 64 which I have Let's Played on my channel, in case you didn't know, so you can go check that out if you're interested. It Before that, I only had, like, a few, like, children games where you, that wasn't really... It was more like mini-games for children uh, on PC. And I've told this story before, but... I, me and my brother got a used Nintendo 64 for Christmas one year. I believe it might have been 99. Not sure. And Super Mario 64 was one of the four games we got there. Uh, the other were two racing games and Ocarina of Time. So Super Mario 64 was the first one we actually tried playing, so I counted as my first console game. And because of that, and uh, me playing it a lot when I was young, it's also very nostalgic to me. It I can't really tie it to any specific memories, because I, I have, like with the Zelda games, I've replayed it a bunch of times. Not as much, but still not enough to not be nostalgic, if, I make, um, if I'm making any sense. <laughs> so number two. Number two is another game I've actually played a little bit on my channel here, and it's Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires 1, I, I do know, because these were not games I had, it were games my dad had, and he didn't play them a lot. But he had the first one a little bit, but then... I don't remember, it was so long ago. Then he didn't have it, or he, like, lent it to a friend or something. But we did have Age of Empires 2, and even though I was not good at it, I really liked just playing around in it, and I've never really been good at, as you might have seen when I played it with my brother. The warfare part and, like, building an army, I'm not really that good at that. I, I'm more of the collecting resources and building and upgrading stuff, like, that's what I feel is the fun, most fun in, in that, that game. And I just remember playing that a lot as well. It came out around the same time as Tarzan, so... And it's just a very, very well-designed game overall. It's... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what to, like, the describe the nostalgia part. It's... <sighs> Some things are just nostalgic to me. It's a lot of the voice clips, for example, for Age of Empires 2. Empires 2 I still quote them to this day, uh, especially with my brother, because he also played it. So we, like, quote them to each other, like, Correctus, you've heard me use that one before a lot. Uh, and there's other ones, like, I forget which one belongs to which civilization, but it's one that it's... Uh, Woods Tree! Or something like that. It might... No, I, I actually don't know. But it's a lot of those funny little quotes. That's also very nostalgic to me. And number one nostalgic game for me is... Pokemon Generation 2 for the Game Boy Color. Specifically Pokemon Gold, but it doesn't make any difference because it's basically the same game. It was my first Game Boy Color game, like, handheld game at, a at all. And first Pokemon game. And I played it so much as a kid. I... Even, even now, I can just go back and pl play it, and it's... I prefer the original, actually, over the remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And it's, I don't find it boring or like old, it doesn't feel old to me, it works. And I, I just still really like it, and I remember, just because it, it is a, a handheld, I could like bring it with me when on vacation, so I remember... Uh, me and, uh, if you remember from my Kirby Air Ride, Philip, uh, one of the guys that was there, ugh, that was there. Uh, when we were younger, both our families had, like, uh, sailing boats. Uh, we still have a sailing boat. I don't think they have theirs anymore. And I remember specifically one summer we went out, like, together. There with their they with their boat and we with ours. And we had our Game Boy Colors with us and he also had Pokemon. And so we played out sailing and, like, to different islands. Uh, in the harbor. We just 
playing Pokemon together and uh, so many great memories with Pokemon. It is by far the most nostalgic game to me <laughs> and just uh, I, I, I'm not good at explaining but just take it take my word for it <laughs> it is very nostalgic for me uh, hard, I can't really find any specific examples because it's it's more of the whole thing in itself than any specific event uh, that I can bring up. So that's my top five most. No, I've talked way too much. This is a long milk bar episode by now. I'm gonna have to cut off a little bit of it, but it, this is like getting close to 25 minutes in recording time at least. Uh, but yeah, good thing I took with these questions now so I don't get any more. <laughs> that would be impossible to answer. But yeah, my top five most nostalgic games uh, for me. Uh, if you have games that makes you nostalgic, feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll read them, check them out and see if like, oh, like maybe, uh, yeah, I recognize that too or something like that. Uh, depending on how old you are, it's gonna differ, of course, so... Like, I won't be nostalgic for uh, really old-timey arcade games or games that came out like 10 years ago. Won't be that nostalgic for that. Um, but yeah, also, as usual, if you have any type of question for me or about me or just something I can answer, like the Majora's Mask question there, feel free to put it down in the comments of these Milk Bar episodes and I will answer them in another Milk Bar. And it can be almost any question, like really weird ones or funny, serious ones. Almost anything, just as the only limit I set is not too private. Also, nothing like racist or f racist questions I don't know whatever what I'm I'm babbling too much now I'm just gonna end it here thank you very much for watching this milk bar episode don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time bye